Hello friends and beautiful people. I am out in the shop making this video because uh, honestly I don't want Hubs to hear it. I don't want him to feel bad about what happened today with our groceries. Um, but it's official. We can't afford groceries anymore. Let me give you a little bit of a, of a history here. Hubs does all of our grocery shopping. The only thing that we buy at the grocery are things that we can't produce here on our farm. Now we go to the restaurant supply store to get things like flour, sugar, salt. Um, but the grocery store we use for things like coffee, um, any kind of a dairy product that we would use, uh, we're working on that. Um, toilet paper, paper towels, things like that. And uh, like canned tuna. So he went to the grocery store this morning. He was there while I was doing the tomato video. And he came back and he handed me the bill and it was $430. And I just about choked. Um, I know he did get a couple of, he got three beef roasts that were really, really small, uh, so that I could can up some stew for him with some of the tomatoes and carrots and onions that we've harvested. Uh, he really likes to have that canned stew on him. So I got to looking and, you know, after I choked for a little bit, I realized it's, it's all good. He, you know, he got himself a big size creamer this time and, um, it, it, became more palatable. Then he came into the office a little bit later and gave me the second receipt. And the second receipt was for $140. Now, I don't know if once a card gets to $500, if it doesn't run anymore or why there were two receipts. He said he didn't even know at the time that he was being checked out that there was going to be two different receipts. Um, but there were. And one 430 and one of them was 140. Then I about choked. I, I, I can't even imagine based on what he brought in the house where that money went. And I, I looked at both receipts and they, they looked okay, but um, he, he's looked at them and said, yeah, I think I pretty much got everything that's on these receipts. So again, I don't know why they separated it into two different receipts, but they did. And uh, we're looking at $570, close to $600 uh, for groceries today. And again, we haven't been to the grocery store. We've been once in the last two months because of a lot of expenses that we've had here uh, that we haven't counted on and uh, thousands of dollars that we really hadn't counted on and we just kind of got by with what we had on hand. And I say that and um, while I was a little bit upset and I don't want him to think that I was upset as in mad with him because I really like the fact that he does the grocery shopping for us and I, I don't want him to feel like he can't get something that he wants because of the expense of it. So I uh, started thinking about all of those people on a fixed income who don't have the $600. There's just the two of us we're buying groceries for. That wasn't even cat food. Um, it, it is just phenomenal to me to, to try to wrap my head around someone who's on a fixed income paying all the extra money that they're paying right now for electricity and for gas, for property taxes, and uh, all of the other significant expenses that are out there that how in the world are they able to afford food? And our gas prices were starting to come down here and I noticed yesterday I, um, I drove a few hundred miles, so I went from the middle of the state down to the southern part of the state and back, and there was a, there was a disparity there in gas of 50 cents a gallon, which it, in itself is crazy. So I think gas prices in our state are ra raising back up, but I, I don't know. But I want you, if I'm having trouble affording groceries, my heart aches for the older people in the community who are having trouble affording groceries. And quite frankly, the first person who came to mind for me was my Macedonian neighbor. So as I am putting things up this year and as we are doing things, you, you have to be careful. There's a sense of pride there and there's that old country mentality there. But I have to be more deliberate about making sure that I'm sending food over there that I am making sure that he is taken care of and that I'm keeping my ears to the ground for other people who might be struggling. 
I know our kids um, are all okay right now, and I don't know that they would let us know if they weren't, but I, uh, this victory garden thing and this growing food for other people, and I had put a lot of pressure on myself, and then I kind of took that pressure back off myself when I realized that I, I needn't worry about anyone but us, Joe and I. And I, our kids are all okay with, you know, like I said, they're okay with their food or whatever. And if they need food, they know that they can, they can come here and my garden's open. You know, and the same thing with my mama. So we give her, you know, groceries all the time, but, but she's fine. And I, you know, the other people that we were kind of preparing for and, and trying to make sure that they were fed, um, there was a little bit of an agreement there where they were going to help us in the garden every Saturday and th their schedule just didn't allow for that. And, and that's okay. Um, it's, you have to have your priorities where your priorities are. And so I didn't have to put that pressure on myself anymore. So I've eliminated the pressure of having to do it. And now my heart says, you still need to do it. You still need to be able, if you feel like someone um, is struggling, to be able to be there to help them. And if you are a gardener, I would ask that you um, keep your heart open to the same thing. Because again, you know, if we're struggling and we're growing a lot of our own groceries, imagine people who aren't growing their groceries and what it's going to be like as things get worse, as food shortages get worse. I mean, I'm already um, hearing that there's parboiled rice orders have been canceled for our distributors and there's going to be a rice shortage this year. There's a lot going on with the drought and that you're going to see a lot more uh, shortages and um, skew rationalizations where we take down the number of things that we are producing and limit those so that we can produce a few things well. So uh, just keep your ears to the ground and your heart open for things like that. And until the next time, be blessed and be a blessing.